Hey man, it's JC400, and we back. Today, y'all, we gonna talk about my three biggest motivations to succeed, right? I don't wanna say just in life, but it definitely to succeed, my three biggest motivations. Start with the first one, man, poverty. I want y'all to understand, bro, when it comes to living in lack, all you want to do is live in abundance. See, it's kind of like um, how they say opposites attract. I see it the exact same way, bro, because when you so used to asking for shit and not being able to get it for different reasons, right, it could be lack of money selfishness but i remember being younger and wanting you know what i'm saying three four pairs of shoes two three pairs of shoes because everybody else in school had them you know what i'm saying but i couldn't get them some years man and i remember specifically i want to say this was fifth grade man fifth grade bro it was, we went into the middle of the year, man. I remember this like it was yesterday. Middle of the year, my little bro just got some shoes, right? His second pair of shoes for the year. I'm about to get my second pair for the year in the middle of the school year, fifth grade. The time comes, we go to the Nike outlet. I know if y'all been in the Nike outlet, bro, I know you not. You know what I'm saying? I know you know a little bit of what's going on. So we went to the Nike outlet. Man, my pops, right? And now that I think back about it, bro, I don't think it was intentional. And when I was younger, I used to think of it like it was personal. But if we really probably didn't have it back then. And I, it couldn't, it didn't register with me. He kept saying, hey, I'm going to get you some shoes, but they got to be under 60. They got to be under 70. We got kids wearing phones in fifth, sixth grade. You know what I'm saying? Phones was a shit, especially in middle school. Phones, right? I'm not going to lie. Chucks was in style back then. Um, Fours, threes. So we at the Nike outlet, man. I got to get some under 60, 70. And I remember I settled for some shoes he picked out, bro, that if I could do it all over again, bro, I would have told him to put that shit down and just, hey, we leaving, I'ma just rock what I got. But I took them bitches, man, and I went to school, bro. It was PE, man, fifth grade PE. And we had just got out the locker room, I'm wearing the shoes, and one of my best friends was actually a female back then. I remember she came up to me as soon as we walked out of the gym and was like, <laughs> what are those? Yo, I know y'all remember that shit. Though. What are those? Yeah, 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 man. And, uh, bro, that shit, you know, I smiled it off. You know what I'm saying? I always had tough skin, but I took them bitches home and I never wore them again. I never wore them shoes again. I promise. And it hit different when a female say it to you. know what I'm saying? Like when you and your homies joining on each other, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's love and it's funny. And then at the end of the day, if you take it serious, y'all could just bump. But when a female do it, it's different, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's different because it's just like, you? You, like, Yeah, man. So, poverty, definitely, man. Just, it's a different feeling, y'all. If you never experienced wanting something so bad and asking for it repeatedly, Christmas coming around, you keep asking, you've been saying you wanted something repeatedly and you still don't get the shit. That's, it hurt, bro. It hurt. And when you get older, you realize, like, everybody ain't got it like that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all was going through shit as a family that you didn't understand back then. But that still don't take away the feeling that you got from it back then. 
right? And it motivates me to this day. I want to have kids when I'm extremely financially abundant to where the only way they'll have to work for something is through my choice, through their choice, that I can provide everything for my kids. That's something that I'm going to make sure, y'all, Empire, that I'm going to do. I'm not going to have kids till I'm financially abundant. But now let's go on to the second thing that motivates me. Generational curses. This one's a good one, man, because my parents had me when they was 19 and 20. So just that alone, right, shows you why poverty set came in when I was younger. But it got better the older they got, of course. You know what I'm saying? But generational curses. They from Alabama, country. They were taught, hey, you knock a woman up, you marry her. So they 19, 20, married, ain't experienced shit for real. They had me. What you think gonna happen? A lot of chaos before it turns into structure. And then let's go before them. Right, I got grandparents, great grandparents that done had eight to 10 kids, but still none of the kids done got financially abundant. I know we got, I got like a cousin, but it's like a cousin's cousin, cousin. He made it to the NFL. I got another cousin, his mama, so I guess my auntie, she a lawyer, but they ducked off. See the generational curses and it shows because the family that I do got that have made a name for themselves, they gone. They doing their own thing. So I feel like that generational curse holds on to me today because if you don't know, a generational curse goes through your generations. So the struggles that your ancestors had fall on to you. It makes you succeeding that much harder. That's why it's called a generational curse, but that's why it can be broken. And that shit motivates me for eternity, bro. Just the fact that y'all motherfuckers couldn't do it, so I'm going to do it. Y'all had 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years to get something going in simpler times than today, but you still couldn't do it. I'm going to do it, though. This brings me to my last one, right? The third one, the third reason that motivates me to succeed. Exes and women, man. Keep it real. I done got my shit crushed, man. I done got my heart. No cap. <laughs> no cap. But um, I love it, man, because some of the greatest motivation you'll ever get as a man is um, being dead wrong, being taken advantage of, especially by your significant other, and then having no choice but to elevate, right? It's two ways you're going to take that situation, right? First, you're going to be in denial for a little bit, of course, especially if you blue pill or beta. You're going to want to blame yourself. But this is the good thing about blaming yourself, bro, because... When you blame yourself, you either choose to improve or you choose to keep blaming yourself and not do anything. So I use the blame for myself to improve. I use that fire in me to keep me going. Whenever I feel like giving up, it makes me think, bro, this girl left you, this girl left you because they didn't see shit in you. If you give up now, they were right. I'll be damned if they right. I want them to look at me and be like, damn, I missed out on a billion dollar nigga. No cap. And I want them to feel that shit for their whole life. Hey, that's how I'm coming, man. That's how I feel like. Now I learned to emotionally detach myself. I'm not a very emotional nigga. And I love that, man. I love it. But sometimes I wish I could feel like I used to. But man, it's all for a higher purpose. Those are my three reasons, man. My three reasons. Poverty, right? Generational curses 
and then exes slash women that did me wrong in my life. My three biggest reasons to succeed, right? Three biggest motivations. I want y'all to think about your reasons to succeed, Empire. And I want you to memorize them, write them down, do whatever you got to do. And whenever you feel like giving up, you better look at it. And you better remember. Because ain't nobody going to help you through this shit. Ain't nobody going to pick you up through this shit. It's all on you. That's why it's called a journey for a reason. It's solo dolo. Hey, man. Peace, love, prosperity. 999. It's JC400. I know y'all fucking with this toxic hoodie, man. It say toxic. Black on black. And we out.